from the Boston Museum of Science. SciTech Today on NECN. In SciTech Today, a closer look at the impact of roadside bombs in Iraq and Afghanistan. There's new research underway aimed at improving quality of life for U.S. troops who've lost an arm or a leg on the battlefield. To talk about the effort to improve prosthetic technology, we're joined by Alex Fiorentino at the Museum of Science in Boston. Hi, Alex. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Beth? Good. Thanks for joining us. So tell us about this new research. Well, what's really exciting about this new research is that it's trying to improve prosthetic hands. So if we think about it, our hands are really incredible tools. We can use them for all kinds of things, from writing to eating to playing the piano. Um, and so they're capable of all these complicated tasks. And over the, the last few years, the technology for mimicking hands with prosthetics has gotten a lot better. So traditionally, you'd see a lot of things like this. This is sort of a simple mechanical prosthetic hand with just simple moving parts. Uh, but nowadays, there are lots of prosthetic hands that are able to move in more complex ways. Uh, so for example, this electronic prosthetic hand made by a local company called Liberating Technologies. Or this one, which is Oops, uh, which is called the iLim and is made by a company called Touch Bionics. Um, so as these more complex prosthetics emerge, the real challenge here is how do we control them? How can we make it easy for a person to move a hand like this in a really natural way? So tell us who's working on making these improvements. Well, Dr. Paul Sederna and his colleagues at the University of Michigan have been awarded four and a half million dollars to tackle this problem. And their strategy is to really control prosthetic hands the same way that we control normal hands. Um, and so when I, when I open my hand like this or, or close it, what's really happening is I'm sending a signal through nerves from my brain down to my spinal cord and then out to my hand. So when a person loses a hand, those nerves don't, don't go away. In fact, they keep on signaling. There's just no hand there to receive the signals. So Dr. Sederna's strategy is to reconnect to those severed nerves, to try to pick up those nerve signals and use them to move a prosthetic hand. So, this, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, thank you. This could actually allow a person to, to just think, I want to open and close my hand, my prosthetic hand, and it would happen the same way as with a, a regular hand. So the nerves are severed though, so how can scientists make the connection to severed nerves? Well, that's, that's really the tricky part here. So imagine for a moment that this is a severed nerve, less than a millimeter across. Traditionally, scientists, when they've tried to reconnect to these severed nerves, have used metal electrodes or uh, other metal wires, things like that. Um, and these metal parts over time can actually damage the nerves um, and, and cause scarring. So instead of using metal, the researchers from the University of Michigan have been using a special kind of nano-engineered plastic. This plastic causes really very little damage to nerves, uh, and it also can conduct electricity really well because of that nanostructure. So it makes it perfect for picking up signals from these nerves. So the way this works is that they actually slide a sort of a, a sleeve over the top of the, the, the severed nerve. Um, and this sleeve is mostly made of muscle, but it's coated with this nanoplastic, which allows it to pick up the nerve signals and deliver them out to a prosthetic hand. Wow, that is amazing. The sleeve detects the signal, and then it sends it to the prosthetic hand to make the hand move? Yeah, that's exactly right. And what's really exciting about this research is that it seems like it might not just work in the direction of sending signals from the brain out to a hand, this process could also work in the other direction. You could have a hand with sensors on it, a prosthetic hand, and it could pick up information about touch and temperature, and those signals could be sent back through these sleeves to the brain. So a person with this, this technology could actually feel through their prosthetic hands. Wow, one day, hopefully. Alex Fiorentino, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Beth. And remember to join us every Wednesday night at 5.30 and Thursday mornings at 9.30 for SciTech Today. Tomorrow morning, the ever-changing world of vaccines, how they work and how researchers are constantly working to make them better.